Well, let's start by um, telling me, you tell me your name and where you're from. Um, my name is Wanda Hunter and I'm uh, native Carlinian. I've lived in Carlisle all my life, uh, born in 41. Were you born in the Carlisle Hospital? I was born in the Carlisle Hospital, yes. And was the Carlisle Hospital up on... Wilson uh, Street. On Wilson Street then, mm -hmm. so it, yes. it wasn't the old Carlisle Hospital. I'm not sure when, you know, it changed, but... It was on, well, the old hospital was Wilson was Street. On, it was the Todd Hospital, and I forget where that was. It was on Wilson Street, too. Well, at any rate, mm -hmm. you were born in the hospital, yeah. and that was in 1941. So you're about 10 years older than I am. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm curious, the reason why I was excited to talk to you is because of your relationship to my mom at the library at the War College. Mm -hmm. Did you always, your your whole working life, did you work at the War College? No, fresh out of high school, I worked for the federal government and I was at Mechanicsburg. Oh, at the depot? Yes, and uh, when my oldest son was born in 1963, uh, I came home to raise a family mm -hmm. and I was home um, until my second one started kindergarten. Um, he was born eight, uh, 65, so I guess it was 70 that I went back to the workforce, you know, for part-time mm -hmm. employment. And I worked for John Bruges in town. Oh, okay. And I was there for about 13 years. And um, I think I was the first black legal secretary in, if not Cumberland County, Carlisle. Uh, and that was kind of, you know, um, I take pride in that. Yeah. Because he took um, the liberty of hiring me and, you know, taking a chance that uh, being black that I would you know, be what he was looking for. And as it, it w turned out, and, hmm. you know, I was there for over 13 years, so. Hmm. And then I went back to federal service uh, to pick up my time and all because I needed benefits. Mm -hmm. And I would say I retired. I went from Mechanicsburg, and I was at Carlisle Barracks, and to end up, retiring from Mechanicsburg, <laughs> and that was July 3rd, uh, 2001, mm -hmm. so I have a varied, um, you know, background as far as, you know, federal service. I worked in transportation, I was at the JAG office, I worked in the library, mm -hmm. so the um, legal secretary job gave me a good background for the JAG office. I bet. So, um, wow. But you were born in Carlisle, and you mm -hmm. were raised in Carlisle. Mm -hmm. Were your parents from Carlisle, yes. too? Yes, yes. Born in Carlisle? Yes, they both were born in Carlisle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. what about their grandparents? Your grandparents, did they were they from Carlisle? Um, my grandmother's side was from Carlisle. I'm not sure my grandfather, or my father's side of the family. Mm -hmm. I know my mother's side, my maternal grandmother. And and you um you had showed me this photograph of um the Wilson School. Yes, this was the Wilson Elementary School. Uh and this was not the class I was in. I don't have I have a picture on my wall of my class, but I didn't bring it with me. Well, we this might was have my, it. We might have it. Okay. Here. Yeah, this was my husband's class and uh -huh. he's positioned on the last row. And there's an itinerary of who the people oh, are, you know, on great. the back. Uh, it's not a very good picture. Mm -hmm. And um So where this, was the Wilson school? It was the corner of Pitt and Oh, uh, what is that? West Street. West North and North Pitt. It's where there's some uh, housing uh, 
what's it called? Uh, public housing. Oh, yes. Now. Okay. Yes, but they tore the building down. Mm hmm And it looked something like the Penn School. Mm hmm um, this is this, probably it in the back. Yeah, that was in the side, the steps mm -hmm. going into the building. Okay, and this and this was your husband. That's my that? husband's uh, now, class. Now, so you went to school. Did you um, live near the school? I lived up? right. I lived on Penn Street at the back of the school, and the school was segregated. So regardless of where you were in Carlisle, mm -hmm. you went to Penn School for you know elementary. And at that time, anyone that was going to high school, there was a quota. Only so many blacks would go, you know, to the high school. Okay. And uh, the schools were segregated until 1947. Okay. And 1947 is when I went to Penn School. Mm -hmm. So I had to pass the Wilson School to go to Penn School, uh, which that was... So that would have been when you were in, like, first grade? It was second grade. First okay. grade was at Wilson. Second grade, I went to uh, Penn School. And then I was at Penn School until sixth grade. Did you walk to school? Oh, yes. Yes, we walked. Um, interesting enough, there was um, Clyde Washington. He was a famous, he was a good football player mm -hmm. um, later in years. But at the time, he lived on Lincoln Street. So he came on Pitt Street, and we would meet him at Pitt and Pan. And then he would have all of these little kids following him or being with him because we had to cross uh, two streets and there were no patrols. So um, we kind of looked up to him as being the big guy that took us to school. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was, well, for one year because he was in sixth grade. And the next year, you know, he went to uh, yeah. the Lamerton building at that time. Right. Um, so, but, so, but you said we, I mean, a whole group of you would walk to school together. You know, I can't remember how many there were, mm -hmm. maybe five or six of us yeah. that would follow him. Um, and when you but, went to the Penn School, was that segregated also? That was the first year of integrated schools. So all the public schools in Carlisle were integrated at that 1947. And the classrooms were integrated. Oh, yes. Everything yes. was integrated. Right. Right. But before but, that, um, the Wilson School was all African American? Yes. At all the classes? Correct. Okay. Yeah, all the classes. So then all... when, when desegregation came, were there non African American kids that went to the Wilson School? Oh, yes, yes. That okay. was integrated as well. Yeah. Um, and in fact, like my brother was two years behind me. Mm hmm. And when he started school, well, we had preschool, which was not at the Wilson School. We didn't have preschool. We went to uh, the Carlisle Community Center mm -hmm. for preschool. But once he started school, rather than going to Penn or than sending him to Penn with me, he was sent to Stevens. Okay. So he went to Stevens School. Was that closer to your house? Uh, it would be about the same distance. It was mm -hmm. a safer walk. Okay. Because you, you didn't, didn't cross Hanover. Correct. The main street. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That would have been a big undertaking for a second grader. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, at that time, um, our parents worked. I mean, so it wasn't like your parents could walk you to school mm -hmm. or by vehicle was just out of the question. Right. But, uh, you know, parents were working, so they couldn't take you to school. You had to... Um, so did you, um, did you, when you got to school, um, what was it, did it feel very safe to you because of the recent integration? It what was felt that like? safe because... Being second graders, I don't think we realized that we knew there was a difference, you know, in Keller, but everybody was treated. I I felt the same. Mm -hmm. And the teachers, uh, at least the ones I had, really didn't show any partiality. I had a lot of uh, teachers that I remember, you know, long after that and would see them in the community. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, there were... Um, 
I wouldn't say there was anything no. in uh, the classrooms themselves. Right. So. And then, so then, did you go to junior high school after that? Lamberton School, it was. Uh, Lamberton. My first year at Lamberton, this was before the new Carlisle Senior High School. Right. And uh, the grades were 7 through 12. Oh. Um, everybody in the Lamberton building, it was a high school at that time. And the first graduating class, I guess, from the new school would have been, uh, it was my 57. I believe it was 57. And that's when the Lamberton became the junior high. Okay. And then the high school was the senior high. Okay. And the Lamberton, I mean, the intermediate wasn't even, you know, in the plans at right. that point. It was... The senior high was just built, mm -hmm. so that was where. So went. the so Lamberton was completely integrated by the time you were yes in junior high school yes and um, but before that, um, because the schools were integrated during your lifetime, was there a separate high school? For African American students, no, there was a quota. There was the quota. So how did that work? I mean, I have no idea. All I heard it was a quota. They would only take so many blacks so, from the Wilson that would go to the uh, high school. High school, and so would they choose those kids who were at the top of the class? I have no idea yeah, how no. how they made the selection. But, so then, if a kid wanted to go to high school but didn't make the quota, would they go? To another town? They would just wait until, you know, the next year or, say, one of the uh, select students went and they would drop out. Then they could pick up oh, another one. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, so um, your husband, your future husband, Dan, was... Um, in grade school with you for he a was year? five years. He was five years ahead of me. Oh, okay. So, so um, when you went to the other to the new school, was he there? No, he went to um, he went to Wilson, and then um, when he went to um, when the schools were integrated, he went to Franklin because he lived on Baltimore Street. Oh, so, okay. but luckily he didn't have to, you know, come back across town. Right. Um, but he went to um, Baltimore uh, or to um, Franklin, Franklin, which is school. where the Y Correct. MCA is mm -hmm. today. The yeah. building is still there. Mm -hmm. So, how did you meet this guy? It was, oh, I guess at the community center there were weekend dances. And he was at one of the dances, and I was there, and that's how we met. And the community and, center was located where? Well, that was um, on Metzger Avenue, behind where uh, One West Penn is currently now. So yeah. that was not too far. That was kind of on your walk to, to and from school, right? It could have been, but rather than because... As you came to, um, I lived on the 100 block of West Penn, mm -hmm. and at the corner of Pitt, we would turn, uh, make the right turn, and then go West Street. Okay. Uh, across Hanover. Right. And then go, um, you know, down to um, Penn School was on uh, Bedford. Yeah, it was uh, on Bedford yeah. Street. Okay. So we would go down to Bedford and then to the school. Yeah. Um, but, yes, it could have been on our way. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was nothing there as far as a crosswalk uh, to get across, so we, you know, went the other way. That, that's something. Boy, today that wouldn't happen, I don't think, would it? We have crossing guards everywhere. Oh, yes. Uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, so you met your husband at a dance. Um, did you... Ha did you... Um, had you known him before? I knew the family. Yeah. And, Did they go um, to your church? Was, or? No, they were Baptists. They oh, went okay. to a church around the corner from Penn Street. There was a, a primitive Baptist, they called it. Oh, I remember. It and was a little tiny white building? Yes, yes. And that's now been converted. I don't know if it's a one-room dwelling or if it's apartments mm -hmm. in there. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, where he went to church. 
um, he was, I knew him or knew of him, um, but um, it's really where we met mm -hmm. was at the uh, community center. And that was the meeting place of the black teens in Carlisle. Okay. Everyone would meet at the, and the, we, the community center at that time had a um, basketball team and mm -hmm. um, had different programs. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they had different programs. That was the basketball team. And there was a gym inside. Um, as you walked mm -hmm. in, straight back was the gym this way. And then there were, there was a library on this side and office buildings. And then there was the restrooms on this side as you walked in. And they had um, preschool as well. All right. And then there was a, a teen club that was at the... Um, you know, the center. A lot of these people um, I knew and worked with, and um, they were from Carlisle, and some of these people lived in Mount Holly. Hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, I recognize the name Gumby. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> were there Gumbies in Carlisle? Because I know there were some in Mount Holly. There is, um, I think one Tom lives in Carlisle. Oh, Tom I, now, yeah. Yes, yes, but yeah. I don't, I think they all lived in uh, Mount Holly at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of our co-workers recently um, has, been, has been active in looking at that little church up on Cedar Street. Do you know where that is, that old log church that is kind of hidden in the woods? On Cedar. In Mount Holly, off oh, of Mountain Road. Oh, no. Right I'm not behind familiar. where the Gumbies live. No, I'm not familiar and with that area. And there's a cemetery there, too. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, there was an AME church in Mount Holly someplace. I don't know where mm. that was. Yeah, that that's what it was. It was a Zion AME church. Oh, okay. AME Zion, I think, is the denomination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so w there were you went there for dances, but obviously you went there to hang out and do other oh, yes. things. Yes. And so, did you usually walk when you were going oh, yes. back and forth there? Yes. Or, well, it was right up the street from yeah. where I lived, uh -huh. and people walked. I mean, we walked any place in Carlisle, mm -hmm. any place you were going, you walked. Uh, you didn't have automobiles. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody. Had uh, could afford an automobile for a teenager to go to a dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about so, riding bikes? Did you ride bikes when you were a kid? Not really. I mean, we had bikes, and I rode bike as a kid, but mm -hmm. it was just just riding a bike for fun, for fun, not ride, for transportation. Not go, no. <laughs> no. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, did most of your friends who you went to school with? Um, did they stay in this area and raise their families like you did, like your school friends? Um, the ones that I went to high school with, uh, most uh, of the guys would go away to college and didn't come back because there was no uh, chance of advancement mm -hmm. as far as uh, education uh, on the teaching field and professionally. Mm -hmm. And I found out with my son, my oldest son, uh, he was in the military mm -hmm. and retired from the military. And rather than coming back to Carlisle, he considered it, but there was no no positions that would be beneficial to him mm -hmm. as a um, black male. Mm -hmm. So he went, uh, he's in the Virginia area now, so he's, you know, employed there. So he's... Um, Never returned to Carlisle and said that he wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But, so. and what about, but your husband, um, have you and your husband, you've lived in Carlisle. I've lived in Carlisle so all my life, and he has. He was, uh, when he graduated from high school, his uh, father told him that he has to get a trade or go to college or do something. So he decided to become a barber. And, um... He went to um, uh, Calmar, I think that's how you say it, mm -hmm. uh, barber school in Philadelphia. 
and came back and was apprenticed to another black barber, Moten, in Carlisle. Mm -hmm. And um, after he finished his apprenticeship, a spot became available, and he rented that and was a barber in Carlisle for over 50 years. Wow. So, And I did have a clipping of that and didn't bring it, so... But he had the barber shop over on um, North West and West North Streets, on the corner. I know that building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that building is that still a barber shop? It's still a barber shop. Uh, when he sold the business to another gentleman, mm-hmm. and I, I'm not sure if that same gentleman is the one that owns it now, but he was the one that bought Dan's business. Okay, and so he he's retired. Is he still living? No, no, he's uh, deceased. uh, 2012, he passed in January to be five years. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and you have other children that live in the Uh, area? My daughter was living in Carlisle. She's now living in Lancaster. Hmm. Uh, She's studying uh, to be a minister, so she's going to Lancaster Theological Seminary. Oh, wow. So... And my middle son, Keith, he's living in Bowling Springs. Oh, so he's not that far. No, he's not that far. That's nice. He um, works at Fager's. Uh, It's kind of like a small Lowe's. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So he's been there for quite a few years. He was at the... It was P.R. Hoffman, not the crystal plant, but there was another Hoffman that he worked for. Mm -hmm. And when they disbanded, he went to work for Fager. Yeah. And do you have um, any siblings that are living in the area? Uh, No, I just had one brother, and Mm -hmm. he passed in... I was... I was 48, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, that's tough. So, um, are there other things that um, that really um, sort of stand out in your recollection about growing up in this community that that yeah. you think might people might be interested in, or that well, I you, think something like the community center was uh, yeah. very strong in my growing up years, and that was because I went to preschool there, and through yeah, teen years... Yeah, you said years, both of your parents worked. Um, so, And that actually was not that usual in the sort of circles that I grew up in. Um, that really wasn't so, so uh, in vogue, I guess you could say until my generation, but you said that most of your friends, their parents both work too? Oh, yes. So what Mm -hmm. did your parents do? Well, at that time, um, my my father was in the military, so he was gone, but she didn't travel with him. He was uh, private, and Mm -hmm. um, they were never married. Mm -hmm. And my uh, mother was in domestic and cleaning, mm-hmm. and she worked at a laundry also because there used to be a laundry on post oh. at Carlisle Barracks, and she worked. And then she walked from Penn Street to Carlisle Barracks. Wow. You know, that was, um, you know, where she did so, a lot of working years. And she was born and raised in Carlisle, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, did, was your mom around during the Indian school years? No, my grandmother was. Was she? My grandmother was born in 1900. Wow. And uh, she died at 83. Did she ever share any stories about the Indian school or Indians coming into town? Yeah. But so, so you and your friends went to preschool at the community center. So you had a network of um, probably close friends that developed really early in your school career. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And and then went through school with you. Right. And are they, any of them still in the area? Um, I'd say there might, there's, no, she was, she didn't come to Carlisle. I was thinking of one that's here now. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but um, she was born in Virginia mm -hmm. and came to Carlisle, I guess, in high school is when she came to mm -hmm. Carlisle. But a lot of friends that uh, I went to uh, preschool with are deceased or yeah. you know, moved away mm -hmm. with family. So, mm -hmm. so it, yes. we were talking about the community center and that this community center was um, was there probably when you were born, right? Yes, yes. And it was right at, on Metzger Avenue. Yes. Um, what, it wasn't the old Metzger Institute, was it? I'm not familiar with the Metzger there Institute. There was a business college called the Metzger Institute. Okay. Um, right well, in that general area. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd be curious to know if it Yes, well, this evolved. is what it looked like. Yeah, and we probably have photos that. in our collection of the Metzger Institute. And so they had these teams, like the boys' basketball team. Mm -hmm. What teams did they play? There were teams from different communities. I know, uh, like from York and Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. But how they got there or anything... I don't know. Now, I remember the coaches, mm -hmm. and it was like, I don't know if you were familiar with the old Lamberton School. I know where it was. Okay. Well, their gym was, it wasn't the size of the high school or anything. It was just mm -hmm. a gym. Mm -hmm. And the high school, Lamberton, had bleachers that would pull down, but it at this um, gym, it was just the gym. Mm -hmm. And maybe there was, um, I'd say, about this area, what's that, about <laughs> five feet? Yeah. For spectators to stand alongside. There was no place, you know, as yeah. far as chairs or anything. You stood and watched the game. Really? Did so, you go to those games? Oh, yes. I mean, that was one of the things that we did. And... We also, well, they had scouts there and also C teens. We were Carlisle teens as the C teens. Huh. That was the uh, the youth group that we had that I was a part of. All tied to the community center. Correct. And after the schools were integrated, was the community center? Oh, yes, it still okay. was. Now, I don't think they had the sports at that time. Uh -huh. uh, and I don't know when PAL started. Because that was kind of like uh, an after-school program mm -hmm. rather than uh, intramural or games or sports or anything. Mm -hmm. um, Did you go there after school? No, I I didn't. I went, uh, we had C-teens, which was uh, one evening a week. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as going there after school, I just remember going home and... And was your mom Homework home? Work and your mom was probably home then. No, she no. was. She would ride a. She at that time when I was in high school and yeah. older, uh, she was working in Harrisburg, so mm -hmm. she would ride the bus. Okay. And uh, come home on the bus, and she would get home, maybe about five or six o'clock, mm -hmm. and then fix dinner, and then we'd go to bed. <laughs> yeah. So you'd come home and do your homework. Yes. Yes. But no mm -hmm. video games. It wasn't even that, no. There wasn't even, you know, as far as movies, and yeah. we went to the movies on Saturday with 25 cents. You did? And you could go in the movies and get a box of popcorn mm -hmm. for 25 cents, and that was that was the uh, the big thing then. Which, mm -hmm. was it the Carlisle Theater downtown? It was both. The Comfort, it was the Comfort at that time. Okay. And uh, the Strand. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um we had to go to the balcony. We exactly. couldn't sit on the... We couldn't go in on the main floor. For the whole and, time that you were growing up? Was yeah. that the... Cus that was... Yes. And I don't know when that changed, uh, but we wouldn't... We were not allowed to go on a flat level. We had to walk to the balcony. Mm. And it was just one of those things that was kind of automatic, you know, growing up that you just went to the balcony. And then when they opened it up, it was like, no, you can't get me to, to go to the balcony. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go, you know, right in here. Oh, you know, wow. Right, yeah. And um, 
Also, some of the restaurants in Carlisle, uh, you couldn't go to. One in particular, I remember, was the St. Charles. Mm -hmm. And we would go uh, to get French fries or whatever. We would have to go to the back door, mm -hmm. and they would give them to us in a brown paper bag. So you didn't French go fries. in? No, the we could not go in, no. Did they no. charge you the same money? The same amount well, of money? Well, we had no know? idea. Right. We had no way of knowing, you oh. know, if there was any difference in the price of anything. Huh. So. What, what other restaurants um, now, were... That's the only one I can really remember, um, because we didn't, we didn't go out to eat, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak. It was... Uh, meals prepared at home, and Sunday mm -hmm. was visiting day. Yeah. You would um, visit relatives in the area, and, you know, you would have your Sunday meal, and that would be your entertainment. After church. Sure. Yes, yes, after church. And at that time, um, mm. as a teenager, we had a youth program even at church mm. and that was on Sunday evenings mm -hmm. so we would go to Sunday evening uh, youth programs and you know that was it there was no Sunday movies either Sunday was a family day yes. and church day right yeah mm -hmm. that's what I remember about Sundays too mm -hmm. and the meal was always the same meal <laughs> Well, it was either chicken or meatloaf. <laughs> it was roast beef or chicken. My dad always talked about how growing up in Louisville, in downtown Louisville, they had chickens. Okay. And on Sunday, they would um, butcher the chicken. Oh, okay. That was the day that they had chicken. And he described that because that was his job, oh. to go get the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very, you know, they all they were all churchy people, mm -hmm. and preachers, and you know, they sang in the oratorio society, and mm -hmm. so. But but that's always been sort of a family tradition: going to church, having dinner together, and then right. uh, we we still have family dinner on Sundays in my house. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That and that was yeah. just kind of a nice time of warming. Friendly time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have extended family? I mean, were, were your grandparents there for dinner? Uh, no, it was more or less church see. people, you know, people mm -hmm. that we knew from church. Mm -hmm. um, cousins, uh, there were a couple of cousins that we would go to. Mm -hmm. And we had certain clothes that we would wear. Right. And, you know, it wasn't like um, you wore a certain dress to school and at church. Your church dress was your church dress. Mm -hmm. You didn't wear it to school. And the same with the shoes. You had mm -hmm. church shoes, and they were your church shoes for Sunday only. Yeah. Uh, and you wore them until your feet hurt. You know, you they were still <laughs> good, but uh, you couldn't get a new pair until, until they either wore out or one of uh, your sibling or cousins could, yeah. you know, wear what you outgrew. Did you wear gloves? We wore gloves and a hat. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you still wear gloves and a hat to church? I don't wear gloves, uh, but I still wear a hat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there are some traditions that just, I think, give us comfort. Mm -hmm. From yes. the old, you know, from the old associations. Mm -hmm. so. Then my grandmother was also uh, instrumental with the uh, the cemetery, the uh, monument that's there. And I did have, this is something that was written in the spring of 68. So that's when the, uh, the stone was placed there. Now, tell me where the cemetery, which cemetery you're talking about. The Lincoln Cemetery on um, North Pitt and West Penn Street. North Pitt It's and where West. Memorial Park is, it's, the upper end of Memorial Park. Right. And, and there's a stone there. Um, when, was the cemetery moved? Uh, they took all the bodies, from what I understand, and buried them in that hill. 
there's a, a loft like between the cemetery and Memorial Park. Right there. Yes. And this is only, I haven't seen anything in writing that that's what was done. Mm -hmm. But that's where, you know, the, the bodies were. And that one stone there that was not disturbed, my grandmother was instrumental in that stone staying there. And how here many, I How many stones do you think were there before? How many bodies it. in the... Well... I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know if the borough would have those records mm -hmm. or if they were, um, you know... I don't um, know if the Historical Society does either. I've never mm -hmm. explored that. But, so your it was your grandma. How, um, how was she able to do that? How was she able to save that stone? Well, I could read this and... Mm -hmm. In the spring of 1968, uh, a complaint was made about the cemetery on North Pitt and Penn Street and thought they should destroy it. These are duplicates, but, and you see they were, hmm. yeah. they took the fence down around the cemetery and then everybody walked through, through trash and it really was a site. It was up to the borough to take care of it, but they really didn't do anything about it. Um, let's see, Mr. J Mr. James George. I don't know if that was Jimmy George or if was or maybe his, her, his dad? No, I think his father's name was Duff. Oh, okay. Came to Mrs. Fleeta Jordan's home to show her a blueprint about the cemetery and he taken all of the stones out of the cemetery and put them in the station that was where Hope Station oh, is yeah. for over a year mm -hmm. and then they were hauled and then they hauled them away but mm -hmm. they really left one there the Jordan Stone and then they took the Carlisle Community Center from us we could not get any help here, so I went to see Reverend Henley in Harrisburg, and he told us we could get help from the OIC and the ministers. Hmm. And that's. And what did anything come of that? No, not not to, not to my knowledge, or not to my knowledge. But um, this, but the one stone that's that's there is the Jordan stone. Yes. Now that um, a lot of um, military, you know, uh, veterans were buried in that cemetery mm -hmm. and blacks as well. So mm -hmm. I, and there's a marker in front of the stone that every Memorial Day they put a wreath there okay. at that marker. So and they I'm, moved the remains up to the. Did they move them to the cemetery? That's up behind the Knights of Columbus. Thing. No. Where did they? To, to my knowledge, there's that hill that I'm talking about. Yeah. Between the Memorial Park and the cemetery, there's a mound like. So it's like a mass grave. That's that was that's my understanding. That, that's the um, sort of the conjecture that that that's the assumption that people have made. Yes. Yes. But did anybody, was anybody there to see? I, I don't know. I don't know. Because that but, was in when, 19... Uh, well, that would have been 70, this happened here, 72 it has on here. Wow. So they didn't just remove the remains to other burials. They just literally sort of moved them around close to the site, That's and then the stones were housed, lodged in that train station there right. for a time, Yes. and then they were yeah. they came and got the stones. And Is there any, um, I, any ideas where the stones might be, or what None happened? None whatsoever, not you've according never, to this. So. You've never heard anything no. about that, mm -mm. and nobody saw them take them? Not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a sad story. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. And are your relatives, any of your relatives, part of that? Probably distant, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's why my grandmother was so adamant mm-hmm. that uh, it was during her generation that some of her, you know, people would have been buried there. Right. Um, to the best of my knowledge, my people were at Union, which is the one you're talking about behind uh that used to be the Knights of Columbus right. on Franklin Street. Franklin Street. Mm-hmm. Does the do the various churches in town have their own cemeteries? No, they like do Like the not. Bethel or the West Street? No. Shiloh Baptist? Never. No. So are most of the congregants from those places, when they pass, are they buried at the Union Cemetery? Is that still There taking? might be some spots available there. But um, most of us are going to um, the one up, the Rittner. What's that? Cumberland Valley. Cumberland Valley? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that Memorial? Cumberland Valley Memorial? Yeah, Cumberland Valley Memorial. So would you say that the cemeteries are still relatively segregated? Um, I mean, the old cemetery in Carlisle, I don't think... I mean, on, there on are South no, Street. Right, there are no To my cemetery. knowledge, that's a white cemetery. Mm-hmm. And it was distinguished between white and black whenever we had Memorial Day per, because they used to have the annual Memorial Day parades. And at that time, the schools had to march in the parades and we had to take flowers. And we always took flowers to the cemetery. And uh-huh. that always... I question, why am I, I don't know anybody here, but we had to take our flowers there. Yeah. And if we didn't put them any place, we put them at Molly Pitcher. So, so you really didn't feel connected to that cemetery? No. no so no. Molly Pitcher was the token uh, connector for for your uh, school. Right. right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Do you feel so, like things have really, are, are very different now they are and they aren't if you understand what I'm saying mm-hmm. uh, a lot of things are done uh, in a subtle manner you don't you don't recognize it unless you feel something mm-hmm. um, and saying that to say I have been you know friends with uh, three white girls and like we would go to a restaurant or go out or something and um, the wait, waitress and or waiters not knowing, you know, because it was inbred in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would never come to me first. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would always, I'd be last, you know, on the list. Mm-hmm. So I picked it up, you know, mm-hmm. when we started going out and my friends, they didn't, they didn't pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I says, oh yeah, so the next time we you know, we're looking for it, and it happened. And they said, okay, the next time we go, you're going to go first, mm-hmm. regardless what restaurant we're at, you go first. And it's just one of the little things. Right. And it even happens now. Um, because when you've been raised like that, you don't, it's not, you, you don't know the difference. You don't know that it's not, the thing to do. Mm-hmm. A person is a person regardless of race, color, creed, or gender now because a lot mm-hmm. of this gender issues are coming, you know, mm-hmm. to the forefront. But I would say it has changed to some extent, but it's not where it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I should see everybody as equals. And that's in the blacks as well as the whites mm-hmm. because I'm always on, uh, I don't know the word to use, on, um, I'm cautious. Alert. Alert when I go, you know, to different places, especially a strange place. Mm-hmm. And not knowing how I'm going to be greeted and I'm thinking all these things that have happened in my past, things that I've been trained, because um, my grandmother had said, in order for you to excel, you have to be better than your white friends, than mm-hmm. your white... And that's always been, you know, something that I've tried to instill in my kids. If you do the best you can, mm-hmm. and 
you know, you won't have any problems, but that doesn't always work. <laughs> but I, um, I still have that. Uh, when I go in stores, uh, I'm cautious. Uh, if someone, a clerk or something, is watching me, mm -hmm. uh, I'm very, uh, you know, I've come to the point, you know, if it becomes too bad, I'll just leave. Or I'll ask them if I can help them. Right. You know, so it's it's there, and I think it's important with, um, uh, and this is a political thing, with the non-discrimination ordinance that they're trying to pass in Cardinal. I mean, you can't make me like you, right. but you should respect me as a person. And I think that's where we are, you know. So um, do you think the, that if, if that is passed, that... Um, people, pe that white people, not people of color, but white people might realize there is not a level playing field, you know? Might that make people more aware if that's passed, or do you it think might that will they make them more defensive? It could go both ways, because they don't, they don't see it as an issue. Mm -hmm. And... It could go. Um, how how so. can, how do you think that it can be made an issue in a way that people would understand, you know, what you're talking about? Being singled out in the store is not something that happens to me, mm -hmm. you know, when I walk into a store. But I know what you're talking about because it's happened to Native American friends that I have. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, I've come, I've come out of a store with with some Native American people, and they would say, "Did you see that? Did you see how he followed us around?" And I was completely oblivious, mm -hmm. had no awareness of mm -hmm. it. And you know, they were laughing about it, but it has to be really hurtful. It is, you know, and it's it's not on the radar of people who don't experience that. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And it's something that they feel that um, it's they've just done all their lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you're. So you know, you have experienced that from the time you were young. Oh yes, yes. And my, um, I can't remember where I heard it or something, but that my freedom begins where yours ends, and your mm -hmm. freedom ends where mine begins. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know. Um, we just should treat everybody as equals, and that's the operative word, we should. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we have to understand what that means. Mm -hmm. So I think hearing stories like this is um, helpful. It's not just something that used to happen. You know, we need to kind of be aware of things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I appreciate your willingness to share that and to especially bring these um, pieces of history that um, make us realize that things aren't, aren't always, you know, weren't always this way, mm -hmm. but haven't changed all that much on some level. Yes. Now the schools so, are different, you know, because they're, but mm -hmm. they're still. But um, are they? I know when I was in high school, and I was an honor student, but I wasn't encouraged to take the college credits, the college courses. Mm -hmm. I was encouraged to the secretarial. Mm -hmm. And my uh, cousin, who uh, was a straight A, you know, I was an honor student, but she was, you know, high honors. But uh, trying to get into college, she had to go to a junior college take college credits wow. uh, because she had, you know, the language and the math. She didn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. It was only the uh, um, commercial or secretarial courses mm -hmm. that she had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I don't know how uh, I've heard uh, some of the children say that um, the guidance counselors kind of lead them towards um, your vocational or other than your college mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, and 
what happens when children are put in reading groups in the first grade. I mean, I think it starts very young. Oh, well, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know how much it's changed because I'm a grandma now, so mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on in the schools, but I mm-hmm. know when my children were in school, it was pretty evident. Mm-hmm. So, well, thank you so much.